If we're okay, so we're recording. So welcome, children. Hey. <laughs> oh, now you've disappeared. Okay, here you are. Okay. So welcome, children. Hi. Close are you mic. here? Oh, okay. So yeah, I think we're live, and if we're not live, we're recording, so it's all good. Um, I, I hear some kind of sound in the background, which may be something with the audio. Don't know. Might be my Maybe. Okay, let's see. So anyway, so we wanted to talk about the whole process of detoxification. And yeah, it see there's a crackling. I don't know if it's mine or not. What? Um, get my headset and plug it in and see if that will take care of it. Um, okay. Doo -doo -doo. <laughs> yeah, these are the challenges, but hey, I mean, this technology is still pretty amazing. Yeah, let me just go on um, my laptop because I have my headset for my laptop okay. <laughs> right here. Um, and then... In the meantime, I'll see if I can see us on Facebook. It must be something going on because now my internet is not showing up. Very interesting. I mean, I'm in California. I'm not even in Mexico. <clears throat> and my internet is down. Come on. I'm leaving from here. Okay. Okay. Is that better? Yeah, that seems to okay. be better. Okay. Great. Um Okay, here we are. So yeah, so we obviously, I mean, we've, we've been connected on, on Facebook for a while and you've been doing a lot of the detox work and you've been doing the fast. And then I had an amazing session with you with uh, the family constellation work that you do. Yeah. And so I thought to, to bring you on so that we can discuss, you know, how, where does this work, where does my work and your work intersect and, and really just how important this um, ancestral clearing work is. Yeah. So maybe I'll let you introduce you into the work because also you have, you have your own style of doing it, which I absolutely love. And yeah, I mean, my session with you was powerful, really powerful. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not going to go too much into my own journey, but basically five years ago, I had a complete physical breakdown similar to what you were going through. I had had my second child, my son, and he wasn't sleeping. And um, I was married um, to my first husband, um, who was not the love of my life. Um, we had gotten pregnant with our first child and just decided to be together. And we, you know, liked each other enough and we were a really good team. And had the same values, but um, so I was in a marriage that wasn't so fulfilling, let's just put it that way. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> wasn't living my purpose, I was taking care of the kids most of the time, and um, my, my ex-husband was really struggling, or we were struggling, um, living on one income in Santa Barbara in California, so we had to file for bankruptcy, and that all together <laughs> just, you know, basically did it, and I had a complete physical breakdown, and actually had left my body. I mean, one night he came home from work and I said, you know, I can't, I just cannot do this anymore. I can't stay home with the kids. I have no energy. And he didn't mean anything and just said, well, you know, you wanted to be a mother. And with him saying that, I just, something in me just broke. And I, I, it looked like I had a panic attack, but I just really completely left my body. I was actually um, hovering under the ceiling, looking down and my kids were on top of me and not understanding what, and crying and not understanding what was going on. 
and it all probably just lasted a few seconds but in that doing that out of body experience i became very clear that the reason why i I was in the situation that I was was because I had allowed a lot of negative negativity into my life. And it was almost like a voice <clears throat> that said, you have to go into pursuit of pleasure. You have to learn about energy. You have to learn to make decisions based on what feels right and good to you. And, and then um, the, the beautiful thing that happened was I was sent back into my body and for literally for five days, I was in a state of com complete peace everything was working i could see how things like they things don't manifest they're actually here the your wish for something and the thing in reality it happens at the same time but because we are not in that state usually it seems like we're wanting for something and it's not there or you know we're not in that experience of our needs just being met when they arise basically and so i had this experience for five days and then dropped out of it <laughs> and then ever since I've been in kind of a I don't want to say hunt but in a, on a journey of um, figuring out you know what what helps me to get back into that or stay in that space and also other people obviously and I've helped a lot of people um, get closer to really being in that state and when I say that state it's just the state of a flow where you're connected and feel good and you're really living you know living a life that feels like, yeah, this is why I came, came here. And you talk about that a lot and you're in that state a lot, right? That's what attracted me to you. And I'm like, oh yeah, she just figured something out too. And what happened for me, you know, I, I didn't stay in that space. And I actually, for the last um, couple of years, have, have dropped quite, quite deeply out of it. Or I felt deeply out of it. And um, you've been helping me a ton to um, just get to the next level through the eating. I had no idea. I mean, I was already thinking I was eating really well and I'm a naturopathic doctor by training and I've been learning so much. And um, so for me, the, the, the last five years have been really about learning about energy, learning about my own energy, learning about universal laws connected to energy and learning how to shift energy. And um, I've been involved with family constellations for over 20 years. I was anorexic and bulimic like you for 10 years and everybody had given up on me because at that time, you know, when, when you've suffered from um, eating disorders for that long, you're, or from any addiction, I think, when you hit the 10 uh, year mark, you're written um, off. You're written off. So the prognosis, well, I had 5% chance of recovery, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> I, I mean, just, just to sort of intersect the the similarity down to details of our story is just amazing you know but to me it goes to show it's like that's where we come together mm -hmm. as whatever you want to call it star seed family to also reflect and to go hey we're not crazy you know we yeah. we can do this and not only can we do this but we came here to experience mm -hmm all these states not as a punishment not as anything as a reflection of us but really just well you can handle it and you can find your way out of this maze so that you can help others to do the same yeah Simple. exactly yeah and so for me you know the first, my first big big breakthrough was really um, <clears throat> releasing the eating disorders with that which i had not been able to do and my mom luckily she was very much into you know, new age stuff. And I mean, she even traveled to India and became a sannyasin for a time. And um, she also is a naturopathic doctor. So she brought a lot of stuff to me, um, including family constellations. She didn't go with me, but she just said, hey, you know, I paid for it to go. We weren't talking at that time. Wow. <laughs> but I had had like a, I had had a wake up moment a little while before and I was really ready. And so I went and had one constellation and the, it was like the, the thing just left, basically the eating disorder just left, which, you know, that was, that was the biggest miracle in my life to that, at that point or to date. And then people just kept saying, well, if that happened to, you know, if that happened to you, this has to be part of your purpose. So I immersed myself into constellations and I actually traveled the world and um, just to be with people that facilitate and to be able to be in, in the work for, that's what I did in my 20s. I mean, I spent the amount of money that people spend on their down payment on their house, you know, on healing, basically, and learning about healing and so forth. That's so what we do. By, the, by the time I was 35, I still hadn't figured out how I was going to make money. You know? 
<laughs> which is only five years ago. And then I had my breakthrough. And then very quickly, through aligning, um, to really learning about these energetic principles and, and doing my own work, but still using constellation, because you know there's so much that we can do on ourselves. And then sometimes we do need an outside tool. And I have, I have not figured out how I can do constellations for myself or how you can do that for yourself. Mm -hmm. So I'm still using or needing other people. And I've trained other people in the way I do them. And so for me, it's been really good to have the, or my own energy work and the stuff that I'm teaching and then having constellations as a tool in my back pocket because they can just read the constellations. They work with the field, with the knowing field. And because we have our subconscious, we have blind spots and it's hard for us to access these things, but for others, they can step in, you know, and it's very easy for them to then connect to the field because the field always knows what's, what's true. And it just saves so much time and, you know, stuff that you could never consciously figure out. So that's why I love them so much. And they always show what's, ex what's exactly needed at, at this juncture for you to have the breakthrough that you need. And so for me, you know, doing this work really has resulted in, I've, like I said, I've never made any money. And then in the last five years, I've sold close to a million just in my spiritual services, which is mind boggling. But as you were saying, you know, we're here to show each other that it's possible. I didn't, you know, I had no idea what I was going to, well, I had an idea who, of who I was and I never fit in. I was like, how am I ever going to make money? You know, how? And um, now it's very clear. <laughs> you know, I'm making it because of my spiritual gifts. And and it all comes from really doing the work that, that you're, you know, mm. sharing. And so, so yeah, I mean, I, I, I want to go into, you know, explaining to people because I feel most people don't even understand, just as I initially didn't understand how deeply the ancestral work can impact our lives. I mean, for me, the, the first time that I was really confronted, you know, I, I thought, okay, I want to work with me. It's enough to work with me. I don't want to work with the whole lot behind me. That's too much. And when I came to live in South Africa, where the African tradition really is all about ancestors, yeah. and so I was confronted with, well, not only do you have to heal yourself you also have to heal your lineage and initially it was like oh my god you know that seemed like so overwhelming because well it's enough with me and i've been at it for at the time you know 10 years whatever but now yeah. there's my whole lineage as well but that actually when we start working on our lineage and when we start understanding that we are the cellular makeup and energetic makeup of everybody that came before us then it becomes so clear it's like well of course they yeah. need to do that work yeah and so yeah maybe you know you can you can shed more light on how deeply actually how deeply does it go and, and, and affect us on a physical level yeah so I've come to really look at healing and everything and ourselves as just through a lens of energy and so from the constellation world, the first thing that I learned is that there's kind of two broad energy streams that we come from, which is the feminine and the masculine, right? Because we came through our father and our mother, those two made us basically. Mm -hmm. And um, so in, in my world, in my philosophy, we basically are made out of these two energy streams, the feminine and the masculine. And that doesn't necessarily mean you have to have a bad relationship with your mother or your father, but it means that you have these two energy streams and they both, um, first of all, they have different qualities and they mean different things for you. And second of all, um, they exist in the, in a whole in wholeness and they exist in, in wounded places. And we all, um, in general, you know, have the, we know what the, the, the whole or the healthy feminine and masculine feels like, but most of us don't live in it. Hmm. And so when you look, when you look at um, your own evolution, or that's what I've done, um, not so much as an, oh, I have to fi fix myself and I have to heal myself, but really more in terms of getting these energies in order, then it becomes easier for, you know, that that's when it became easier for me. And that's also when it feels like um, it really hasn't so much to do with fixing or repairing or um, it's really more about shifting. 
right? Because yes. at any given time, You're giving, I, I feel almost giving everything its rightful place. Exactly. And that's a lot what, what constellations does, you know, because yeah. everything is kind of like mixed up and entangled. Yeah. And so you're not effective in, you know, in being you. And a lot of what the constellations does is just put everything in their place so that you can be free and be you and be the most powerful and most harmonious. Because of what I've learned is that for us to have what we want and be who we want to be and, you know, really have all the energy that we want to have to be the most effective and most powerful selves. Um, we first of all need to be in harmony energetically. And that's what kind of happened automatically for me in those five days. I was just catapulted into a state of harmony for five days. And uh, we can get ourselves there by working with the feminine and masculine and cleaning, cleaning those energies up actually. Mm -hmm. And then the other part, the other big part is um, clear, like being connected to our desire, which has to do a lot with our sexuality and our wounding in, in that, in that area. Um, and really, knowing what it is that we want because if we um aren't honest with ourselves about that part then nothing can manifest and uh, a lot of you know a lot of us stop like we we actually do know what we want but we talk ourselves out of us so fast that we don't even notice Absolutely. and so part of, and part of it can come from ancestral programming and just things the way they're done in our family right because that's what what feels safe so our makeup is, you know, for most of us, it's obviously it's generalization, but they say that we really are just 5% consciously aware and 95% is what our, you know, our life is created or um, the opportunities that are allowed into our awareness are really made possible 95% by our subconscious. Mm -hmm. right? so in essence, what, what our subconscious is holding is what we are automatically trying to recreate because it's known and safe. Our subconscious yeah. always wants to keep us safe and what's known is safe. And so if we have, um, let's say we grew up in a, in a dysfunctional family and we have this function or in a dysfunctional picture in our subconscious around family, then that is what's normal and safe. And so we will keep recreating. Mm -hmm that just by you know, autopilot and what the constellations does and why it's so powerful um the constellation can actually the constellation work can actually replace that image so instead of you know you carrying a dysfunctional image of relationship in your subconscious it can be replaced with a healthy image and then your subconscious will just go to create that because it always wants to match the image that you're holding yeah and and so you don't have to I, I didn't have to work on letting the eating disorder go you know yes it's just, it felt like it just automatically fell away you know 20 years ago i couldn't explain why now because i've done so much reading and learning and trying to explain what's happening um i can well and then basically the other part, you shift yeah. the reason you shifted the reason that's the thing. It's all of our dysfunctions. You know, we, we, we want to go and fix the symptoms or we want to go fix the, the dysfunction. Meanwhile, the, the, the dysfunction is always just a symptom of an underlying imbalance. And when we go and fix that or put it back into its rightful place, the dysfunction, the addiction, the dis-ease ceases to need to be there because we've resolved the root. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's very powerful and it's very fast usually for people. And, you know, I've, we, I've resolved lifelong struggles for people in an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I want to share my, my session that I had with you the other day. And um, my whole life I've been really in such deep pain around my mother. And, you know, and I realize she is a representation. And I feel, oh, poor mother that has had to play this role of being the awful painful mother for me but I realized well that's the sole contract that we that we had and in the session with with you I you know you showed me I was able I mean I was watching a movie it was like watching a movie and I just sat back and I mean it was just so fascinating because you were taking the role of Alex and then you were taking the role of my mother 
and I could see what was happening. I could observe this movie and I could see the movie for what it was. And by watching it so clearly, by being an outsider and yet having you so deeply in it, which was amazing. I was like, wow, you would make a good actress. <laughs> And, and, you know, the full emotionality of it, it's like, oh, I can see now exactly what happened. And that, which is also what I always knew as a child that, you know, I came in as this alien child and that my poor mother could not relate to this, who is this weird child that is not like all the other children or the children that I thought that's how children were meant to be. And that there was this just this this inability to relate. I couldn't relate to her because what is mother? Mother is supposed to be holding space for me and allowing my blossoming. And she couldn't understand why doesn't this child behave in the normal way? And and so to really see it displayed made so much sense and really relieved me of there's nothing wrong with me, there's nothing wrong with her per se it's just this is what needed to play out and what allowed me ultimately to become who i am and then also seeing you know how we make decisions based on our perceptions right because uh you know just speaking from from stepping into the energy field of your mother um your mother thought that she was being punished with having a child like that when in reality it was actually an amazing honor, you know, and in the constellation, she could, that could, she could see that, right? She could see how, wow, I've been given like such a different child. Like what I must have, you know, universe stores must have thought I was really capable, you know, and she was under the assumption that she was incapable her whole time just because of the assumption that she made based on, you know, you just being different instead of seeing, wow, the reality is like she is a really different child and the universe entrusted me being capable enough of raising such a, a child because that is the truth, you know, the universe yeah. saw her as capable enough to be, a, Absolutely. You, know, you know. Absolutely. Which then also puts everything always into perspective that whatever happens to us happens for us. Yeah. And that's just, I mean, that alone to me changes everything, you know, I mean, that's what's so much of my emotional work that I, that I do, which is the basis of, well, whatever it is that you're given, it's never a punishment. It's never something bad, but it's, where is the gift? Can we find the gift? And, and then it's almost a maze, a labyrinth, an invitation to enter the labyrinth to go, okay, let's go look for the gift. Yeah, I mean, you know, if we if we really can uh, agree that we're here to grow spiritually, if we think we're here for some other reason, then it becomes difficult. Yes. But if we can really agree and uh, embrace that we're here to grow spiritually, um, we can trust that the universe always works in the most efficient way. Right? Yeah. When we're in it, sometimes it's hard to see. <laughs> yes, well, yeah, yeah. that's... That's, that's why community is so important and having each other and... You know, your group is so amazing because, you know, it's, it's, I mean, I've been around Facebook and I've mostly built my business on Facebook and your group is really the most valuable I've seen and participated in the whole time. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's been, well, it's been my gift to myself, really. You know, as I'm sure you feel the same way with your women's group is it's, we do it because it's what feeds us and then the feedback that we get and, and, um, and the gift of, continuously being transparent and real and you know bringing things and and that's what I also so appreciate about you is you don't put up a front of perfection which I feel yeah you, I'm actually you know, I shouldn't have pulled out all my stuff this morning I'm in the process of moving <laughs> why did I do it this morning like I wasn't planning on using my laptop so now you're seeing actually my total mess behind me and normally it's not like that but yes yeah <laughs> No perfection, just as it is, because I am, I am so tired. I am literally bored to death by the picture of perfection. Because, I mean, we all know, no matter how perfect it looks, it doesn't exist. Right? But yeah. and why even why even why doesn't why is perfection even something that you desire know, you yes. or value so much? Completely, completely. And I'd rather it's, it's more, let's get interested. 
how do you dance with your imperfections and not even imperfection because even that like i mean that whole word should actually be eliminated from the vocabulary because repeatedly what i experience is that it is it's in the so-called downward down wave in the in the in the ebb that we in that our life becomes so much richer so the very thing that we so resist and dance around often for years and years and we kind of you know we get close to it and then we find something that we can run away from towards and so and eventually when we're with the back against the wall and we figure okay there's nowhere else to go but in and then we go, why didn't I go there sooner? Why was I so afraid? Because ultimately, I mean, how bad can it be? You know, how yeah. bad can the dark be? Yeah, and it's really just the ego, you know, and the more we understand that um, the reason why, we, why it takes us so long or why we go there is because we're so identified with it, right? If we could just mm. be in our higher self and our true self more, and then we would see it quicker and also be less afraid. Yes. Yeah. So I, I really appreciate the work that you do. And I, I mean, I can't recommend a session with you enough. And it, in, in one session, you know, it's like, boom, in, out. And then of course there's the ripple effects because I feel that from the session that we've had, I've been now able to also, I've released my father. So it's from that angle, I've been able to see it's like, well, the domino effect is like, of course, you know, everything happened from that wrong perception. And that from me lifting that wrong perception, then I've been able to also lift my dad and well, let's see what happens. But I know from previous constellation work that I've done is that even though they don't know technically that I've done this work, I know that there will be repercussions. Yeah, it is, you know, I, I was actually just doing a training on constellations this weekend and um, part of how I think Hellinger even, who he is the one who brought, he was actually a missionary in Africa and observed the Zulu mm. tribe doing this and that's how he, you know, he observed it. It's, it's, a, it's not something that was invented or created. He, it's, it's an approach that came out of um, observing a phenomena and we very much, I still work with that. You know, I just work with observing the energy and going with it. So he basically described it as um, we're all connected to um, a mobile, like, we're, you know, our family or the system that we come from um, or the system that we're within, if, you know, if you want to work, do work on your, with, with people that you work with or so forth. We're always in a, in a system or if you just want to work on your body, your body is a system in itself. So there's always a system that we're connected to or that's energetically connected. And every part of that system has its rightful place. Like in a, in a, if a mobile was in balance, you know, everything would hang in its right height and the mobile would be balanced. Mm -hmm. And so when, when you don't feel right and when things are out of balance, it's just that these pieces have gotten entangled. And in the constellation, we basically follow the, the thread and put everything back in its place yes. and so that's why people you know people are going to feel differently because they are connected mm -hmm. like, we don't see it but everything is energy absolutely so i've had constellations i had um, postpartum depression with my second child and wasn't able to actually travel to somebody who i trusted with the constellations and she did the constellations for me and i i was on the beach that day with my child and i remember at two o'clock this it was just a feeling of this heavy thing just lifting. And I finally could feel the joy. I'm like, because I knew what it should feel like. I had had a first child and I was so in love. And so, and I just, and, and I was so frustrated of not being able to have this feeling with my son. And I literally at two o'clock, this thing just lifted and, and the feeling was there. And then later in the day when I talked with them, it was the exact time they did the constellation. So you don't even have to see it or be there, right? Because yeah, it is yeah. a form of energy work. That and makes so, sense. Yes. Yeah. So how how do people find you and and well I mean I guess we've we've linked the um, or I will link your website and um yeah is there anything else that you that you want to sort of share 
about your work or also how it combines, you know, how for you maybe like what shifts have come in through the detoxification process? Mm -hmm. So first of all, the, the, my work right now, the body of work is called the pleasure IQ. So I've basically realized that I needed to develop a new kind of intelligence which had to, which had to do with following my own pleasure. And, doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to necessarily do with sex, but that's part of it being in your body and really knowing what feels right and good to you. And um, there's four steps or the reason why people can't do that. There's because of shame and guilt, because they're not um, in their healthy feminine and masculine, because they're not connected to their core sexual creative power and because they don't know how to maintain a high vibrational frequency. So I teach around those subjects basically in the Plush IQ I've taught as an online course. I'm working on getting it published and so forth. And then I have a group where I do energy work every day and where we're talking about maybe collaborating on that. Yes, we'll have that and, on Utopia Rising as a, as yeah, a daily. As a daily, because, um, in, and so where, where your work came in was for me, um, the, the maintaining my high vibration. Mm. Um, <clears throat> I found and connected to my divine partner, Twin Flame Soulmate, two years ago, which had been, you know, the biggest wish of my life, basically, after having my kids. Mm. And, um, and then a whole bunch of stuff started happening. And um, I really went into a downward spiral. And um, then last year, by co I wasn't really intending to keep working on my health. My health had gotten to a place where it was okay, you know, not great, but it was good enough. And then somehow I ended up talking to somebody about my white spots on my arms. And um, he is a naturopathic doctor. And he said, oh, yeah, that's a dopamine deficiency. And it has to do with your gut. And if you don't watch out, you know, you could get Parkinson when you're older. And I'm like, no way. <laughs> and he was um, advocating a um, candida cleanse. Mm. And so I got started with that um, last September and it was pretty intense. So really my, the whole last year was basically just focusing from September on, on getting healthy. And then around Christmas, um, I had gotten to a point in the cleanse where I was able to add in certain things. And I got so nauseous that I couldn't eat for almost a month. And I just posted, and I had started adding in my um, probiotics. And I was feeling so bad that I just didn't know any better and posted on Facebook. Does anybody know anything about, you know, being allergic to probiotics or blah, blah, blah. And then a friend of mine said, oh, you, you must check out this woman, Alex, from South Africa. And so that's how we connected. And then I started oh, wow. learning about the mucus, because those Canada cleanse was not mucus-free, you know, it was... Yeah using herbs but I was still eating eggs and I wasn't eating meat anymore but still eating eggs and rice and potatoes and things like that so then um, my body was just really happy going on the mucus free in January and I've been on it and then in March or April you started talking about a fast I'm like there's no way I'm going to do a fast because I had done one and it didn't go well and then also you know with my um my history of being anorexic and bulimic and so forth. I was like, there's no way, you know, there's no way I'm going to go there. And then as the day came near that this thing started, I was like, hmm, maybe I'll actually do it. You know? And then I did it. And it was, um, it was really tough because it showed me how much healing my body still needed. I had so much acidity. I was for a mm -hmm. month, I wasn't capable of doing much. I was just laying in the sun and laying, you know, basically just laying and, also, I wasn't able to drink more than one liter of grape juice a day, and it tasted horrible. And it was really, it was tough. I mean, you were there the whole time, so you know. It was really hard for you. I mean, I, you know, and in many Basically. ways, I could see myself. I could, my first fast was also, it was really hectic. It was physically really hard. Not so much, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. I would fantasize about eating salads, but I didn't have any cravings. I mean, I was mm -hmm. hungry a lot, and I was, you know, so it was more, and then also for me, the big thing was seeing my mind going only, you know, only this more time, only this, even though everything was fine. I was like, just counting, you know, I just wanted to get there. Just wanted yeah. to get there. Didn't matter. Just wanted to get that. I was obsessed with just getting there. And then you keep saying, oh, you know, just wait because the benefits will come after the fast. And uh, my eating has been really strange <laughs> since then. I basically decided I'm a, I'm a raw vegan gluten-free eater right now. So that's what's been happening. I've been really, all of a sudden, I've been enjoying eating like food, like pasta stuff again, which I had no craving for. I was so happy just eating fruit and dates. And right now, you, dates are like the least thing I want to have. It's so, 
but I've just decided to just allow myself to go with it and be okay with it and not fight with it, fight it. And um, the, I have been physically and emotionally feeling really amazing for two months. The last week has been a little hectic, but I also have a lot. I have a two-year-old visiting my sister and her two-year-old and I've had, I hadn't, haven't had a break at all, like time to myself. So my energy is a little wobbly, but it's definitely, and obviously I've made some really big decisions in terms of leaving where we're living yes. and moving to a place I've been going, wanting to go to for a long time. And things feel really good. Our, my relationship with Paul has really stable. I have stabilized a ton. Hugely, you know? hugely. I mean, the yeah. shift for me to see the shift in you is, you know, never mind that you are really glowing and radiating total, on, no? <laughs> total vitality, yeah, like on all levels. But it's, and, and I'm actually, I'm glad to hear that you are finding, you know, because that's so, such an important part of this whole process. It's not about being dogmatic and strict, but it is about falling into a natural way of eating, and to also realize that it will change. Yeah. I mean, the moment I decided, okay, I'm just going to be okay with being a vegan that is gluten-free and eats mostly raw. The next day, all I wanted was just fruit, you know? That's the thing. No. <laughs> yes. That's so the thing. Okay. It must be my body then. So I'm just going to let it have what it wants. For now yeah. And just that that's what it needs. And, and, and I mean, one of, the, one of the main reasons I really wanted to do the fast was because I still had a lot of um, chronic pain. Mm -hmm. and that has really mostly subsided it's come back this week a little but it's also colder again which for me I think triggers some of it mm. well and I mean you know of course they still work yeah but, but I mean two months of having no pain I was like oh my god this is how good I can feel you know? yes yes and to realize that it's 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 a process and it's not, and it's not about dogma. It's about trusting that your body knows. And eventually, you know, you may have phases where you be going to be completely off the pasta and off that. But right now, there's something that needs that, and so well, we honor that. Yeah, yeah. Which is such an important part of the message, which I find it's the most important. It's the trickiest one to convey in the right way, because if I say it's okay to eat some you know, gluten-free pasta, boom, everybody goes and eats the gluten-free pasta. It's like, but hang on. Is yeah. that what your body is calling for, you know, or is it the pathogens or is it, it's like, where is that coming from? Is it a true honoring? Is it serving you? You know, so that's what I find. Is yeah, and, I mean, I, and I've had moments where, you know, I ate pizza. I mean, I ate real pizza and oh my God, I will never ever do that because mm. my belly swelled up like a balloon. And it was, so. I mean, I was like nine months pregnant without a baby in there and it was hard like a rock and I couldn't sleep that night and it was painful. So I'm, I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've done it. I've done it. And I've learned that was like, whoa, that was, uh, oh, my God, like, wow. Yeah, that's so why when people can't say get away with stuff anymore like that. Yes, I try, you know, I try like, can I get away with that? Like, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, and, and that's the beauty of the process is like, well, don't ask me try it. Try it and your body will tell you. And sometimes the body does let you get away with it because there's a specific reason for it. But then also sometimes it lets you get away with it two or three times and then it is done. You know, it's almost like it's such an inch. And that for me is almost the most, the most fascinating part of this whole process is, and I understand it, but it's, it's kind of hard to sort of really put it into words. I always like to tell my story. I don't know if I told you my famous story of the burger from God. No, I don't think I've heard that one. So that was after my, I think, second or third fast where um, my daughter wanted a burger. And so, you know, when they asked for a burger, I said, okay, we'll go to the best place, organic, blah, 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 have it. And I had just finished my fast three days prior. So I was on only fruit. There was no idea, no fantasy about eating the burger. But as it came and I cut it in half, I 
automatically, there was no thinking process, took that other half and it had bacon and cheese, like it had the works. And I simply took it and I ate it. And it was like eating God. And then the thought came, oh my goodness, what am I doing? I'm I, I just eating this and I'm fasting. And oh, I was fasting. And God was like, just enjoy it. Just experience it for what it is. Because this was not a choice. It was an arising. And so I did. And, and after that half, it was also it was completely enough. <clears throat> and I was high for five days from that whole experience. I didn't want more. But what had happened is that the idea that any food is bad per se collapsed. Yeah. You know, it was like, it's not about meat being bad or cheap. It, nothing is bad per se. But where does the arising come from? And then the greatest lesson was maybe three, four, five months later, I wanted, to, this was like, yeah, last year, I wanted to reenact the experience. I wanted to have that experience again. So I went to the same place, ordered the same burger and it tasted like cardboard. I was like, why is this not, ex this is disappointing. And I was mad and angry and the lesson was, well, because now you are attached to having that experience. It wasn't an arising. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So then that really allowed me to tap into, well, what is your body asking for? And where is the arising coming from? What is it actually, you know, is it a pure divine arising that you're nourishing your body? Or is there some story which typically it is when we have cravings, you know, when we're not clear, we are trying to satisfy something that is actually the, 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 the craving for connection. Yeah. And for me, I mean, I've shared this with you, you know, the last um, eight months, really, none of the things that used to give me, you know, I am like teaching about pleasure and pleasure IQ. And meanwhile, I could not find something that would give me, you know, not even like sex or orgasms or not having orgasms or, like I couldn't find this, not even food, like nothing was giving me, mm. nothing was giving me the, you know, like it seemed like nothing would suffice other than just being in a state that felt so, you know, so it was really hard the last eight months because all my other things like move, you know, usually I would just move and then I would feel like really good. I would have, you know, I would have sex. I would feel really good and none of it would work anymore. It was like, so what you were, you know, I can't, like, it has to be the, the true like what's most pleasurable, you know, and I think in general for us is if we can be in the state where we are just in it, you know, completely present to life, right? You were just consuming life in that moment, basically, and living and being alive. You were trying to live. Or... To the authentic arising. Yeah. Without judging what it is. Yeah. Which that's why also, I mean, earlier, you know, we're kind of deviating, but whatever. Um, <laughs> when we're, we're going with the arising. And so earlier when I was speaking about, you know, too much emotion and pain and, and all of that, it's like, well, if there is no pain, when suffering is what arises and you meet the suffering with pure presence, it's not painful. It's not pleasant maybe, but it's what it is and you're being authentic. And then there is bliss in that meeting yourself in your authenticity because you know that this is divinely ordered and so i think that's where really this whole conversation kind of you know rounds off is that well are you being present to the arising and does everything has have its rightful place yeah and obviously constellation can help you let go of what's not yours of things that you don't even know, right? I'm, I've been yes. doing this for 20 years and it's still so surprising. I mean, what came out of your constellation? It's never come out, but I've never, you know, never even considered. Yes. So it's, it's wild and it's like, it's so amazing and so enriching. And um, I'm just always, you know, more and more getting to place of just realizing I have no idea, you know, I have no clue. What and I I really thought like three years ago when I made a bunch of money I was like I figured it out I'm somewhere I'm somebody now you know mm -hmm. and then you know pride becomes comes before the fall I had to fall 
And now, you know, two, two and a half years later, I'm like, wow, good thing it came when I, you know, good thing it came when I made, you know, 300,000 and not when I made 3 million. <laughs> that would have sucked more. <laughs> I yes. had to learn my lessons around that. So, um, the and you look at the beauty, happened. the beauty where it has gotten you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, and, you, know, our relationship, you know, our relationship, obviously, with our intimate partners are our vehicles. Our relate, for me, uh, one of my biggest teachers and healers is my relationship with money because that's where I go into um, so much shame and so much unworthiness and, I mean, so much struggle and, you know, mm. our relationship. And, and, you know, obviously, cons constellation work is relational work, you know. It's all based on looking at our relationships to whatever right? money family body and then cleaning them up so because actually today i was i was talking to to misha about you know this relationship to money and how so many of us really especially those of us in the spiritual realm or you know spiritual work we have money issues you know on some level i mean everybody has money issues but it seems like in spiritual realms they're particularly accentuated and so what is the lesson around money or how does money relate to where does it come into play it's just, an, it's, it's just another mirror you know so you know for for somebody who is wealthy and is sick to their stomach with anxiety it just mirrors them you know, their in, in, inability to trust, for example, right? Mm. For someone who doesn't know how to make it or thinks, you know, it, it shows you your, where you stand with worth. Mm. But it really just money in itself is, and I have represented money a ton because I do a lot of work with people around money. So I've been able to step into money and it, it's different for everybody. But in, in general, it's always a very benevolent and supportive and uh, friendly force. You know, it always... I mean, I've had money, money that felt really sluggish and was really disappointed and stuff because the person wasn't living their purpose or some things like that, you know. Yes. But money is just um, money itself is not not something that's bad. It's there and it's there for all of us. It's there in abundance. And um, again, it's just up to us to um, get ourselves in alignment. So oftentimes, the picture that I give is basically. We or our life is a, is a six story house and six stories because 600 is the level of peace is the highest level that a human body can, can vibrate at, you know, anything higher in the body starts disintegrating and just becoming light basically. Um, and so the, the, there's six stories basically to our life or our house or our potential that we can live. And most people, they live in the, the basement or the first and second story. So they live below the level of 200. And David Hawkins was a lot, has done a lot of research on that work. 200 is a level of courage, energetically and vibrationally speaking. Everything that's above 200 is life giving. Everything that's below 200 is life destroying. Mm. I think something like 95% of the population lives below 200. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the rest of us, we balance that out, you know? So... Um, the the reason why we feel frustrated or know that there's something more is because we already exist in our totality. We just don't live on the sixth floor. We live on the, you know, most of us live on the third or fourth floor at this point. Anybody watching this and you and I, um, you know, maybe even the fifth floor at times. So for me, it's always just about doing what we need to do so we can be on the sixth floor and obviously eating in this way and, and letting go of our negative emotions and things that hold us down does a great deal of getting ourselves up there mm. and so all the money that we want everything all our needs are met at the sixth floor and even at the fifth and fourth floor we're already living a really good life and so it's not inter like we don't have money issues we have an issue of um living in the right vibrational space basically right we don't have relationship issues we don't have you know the issue is always we're not living in our highest space basically yeah yeah yeah, and that when we plug in there, everything simply flows, yes. Yeah, because everything is already around us. Um, the way to make the money, the people that want to give us that money, but if we are not um, vibrational match, we don't see it. We don't, you know, we don't see the opportunity. You know, I didn't think mm -hmm. I could make a bunch of money with constellations because I was living in a lower, uh, in a low, different reality and in a lower re reality, um, you know, healers don't make money.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not really a struggle. Yeah, you were plugged into that story. Yeah, I was, you know, the lower vibration frequencies are frustration, um, struggle, and so forth. And I was, I was resonating or was living at that level. So the universe just gave me more experiences of struggle, you know, which just sent me one or two people a month to do constellations. Mm -hmm. Like I made $200 a month, which Mm. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you, Carolyn. I think, I mean, yeah, your work is, is really amazing. And I, I always enjoy all your, your input also that I get from, from your daily, um, what do you call them? Your daily energy. Naked tr- my naked truth. Yes. Naked truth is, you know, the naked truth is that we already are complete and here and the six stories available to us and we can align ourselves to remembering that every day. So I do a 10 minute energy alignment, soul alignment every, my morning. Right. To stay connected or get connected to that space. Yes. So we'll, we'll put that into the Facebook link if anybody wants to join and get sort of like their daily dose of high vibration. But also it will be on Utopia Rising, which will be live by the end of August, which I'm super excited about because we're rebuilding a cool network of people where we're keeping it super real and it's just a bunch of people who want to live in the high vibrational life and supporting each other and seeing that yes none of us none of us have have it figured out or very 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 few of us have figured out how to be there constantly and it, in some ways also that's not real the real thing is how do we ride the waves and how do we ride the waves in the most elegant way possible, enjoying all states, because that's really, and and, and drawing joy and growth and satisfaction out of all states, because I think that's what this whole work is about and realizing it's, um, everything grows us. And again, I can't recommend enough a session with you because I think it's so life-changing and so quick to really shift things. And we all have deep, um, deep ancestral issues. I mean, those are our biggest things. Oftentimes, it's it's the biggest chunks. It's it's the real, the real kind of um, not dirty work, but it's the it's the real heavy stuff that that tends to lie there. So yeah, I highly recommend a session with you, and I thank you for joining me, and thank you for being part of of my tribe. Thank you. Yeah. And I mean, you know, we, we do need each other, right? Absolutely. That's been the biggest lesson for me this year, the biggest, and especially women to women. I mean, of course, men to men also, I see it great work, but women to women that there's this new, also this new way of being for me, certainly new, new way of being together of, of, real sisterhood real it's like well we don't come together just to talk love and light but can we come together and really hold space for each other and see that whatever the other brings to us on some level always mirrors our stuff as well you know because it's so easy to know this person's bringing me you know like stuff that that makes me uncomfortable or that maybe is like too much it's like no you know if it's in your space it's for you too yeah. And for me also getting out of hierarchies, you know, because it's really a dance that, you know, there's times when I can help you, there's times when you can help me. And it's not Absolutely. about being better or more advanced or there is no hierarchy, like breaking mm-hmm. them. I've been working with this a lot, you know, because I obviously have clients, but I've had clients that became my mentors and I've had, you know, a lot of my clients that became friends. And so I had a lot of, you know, my, my, my normal self was like, that's so inappropriate and you don't do that. And so I've, well, over the last, you know, since I've been in business, that's been a theme for me to work through that and just break through hierarchical structures and, yes. and me falling back into like finding someone and putting them on the pedestal mm-hmm. and, you know, creating suffering for me again, myself and working through that. And yeah, so I'm really interested in kind of that kind of work of, you know, getting out of their hierarchical with the, with the masculine as well. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. I do feel that is where the work is at now. It's, there is nobody that's better. It's just we're all bringing together our knowledge and how can we support each other so that we can grow exponentially, further. Yeah, yeah, exponentially grow together. Yeah. And we're all going where nobody has gone before at the end of the day. That's for sure. 
<laughs> so it's exciting times. I'm I'm really glad to, yeah, to have you in my life, and you know, very very grateful, very grateful for everything that you are bringing out and all that you are. Thanks. So thank you, Carolyn, and yeah, I'll put we'll put all the details in the thread, and people will know how to find you. And I will.